Hey, I'm Hart, and you're watching the Backbeat Experience. All music is the same. It's just a new set of lyrics and a new backbeat. Andre Graziati for the Backbeat Experience. Today, in a chat with her, or otherwise known as Monique. I was born with the name Monique. Monique. But, uh, what, was your, what was your last name? Stefilly. Stefilly. Where's that from? Um, well, my dad is Italian. My mother's Polish, so my mom came from Poland. Okay. Um, and uh, my dad was born in Brooklyn, New York, but um, he's Italian, Sicilian, so Monique Stefilly it is. <laughs> so how's, how's your cooking abilities? Uh, my Italian cooking abilities are amazing. Really? I definitely say I make a good gravy. We call it gravy. We don't call it a sauce. Uh, okay. It's a gravy. What's the difference? Well, the Italians call it a gravy. You know, right. everybody else calls it, you know, pasta sauce or sauce. But spaghetti sauce. Spaghetti sauce. No, that's huh? a gravy. You can't put gravy on it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, my Polish cooking I probably <laughs> barely can make a frozen pierogi, and that's it. <laughs> okay. I thought pierogies were, were Russian, but anyway. Probably, yeah, um, yeah. So, so did you grow up in like a musical family? Um, yeah, I grew up in New York City, and um, yeah, uh, both my parents are really creative, artistic. My dad um, is a rock and roller, glam rocker from the CBGB's era. And, glam rocker. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. His band was actually the first um, band from America to play in Russia. In the 70s. Okay. So, um, yeah, so he, he falls in that uh, New York Dolls kind of category. He's played with those guys too back in the day. David Johansson. Yeah, so before there was David Johansson, my dad was uh, messing around, singing with them. And yeah, my dad's a wild guy, so now he's uh, an artist, a painter, and he actually paints all of our merchandise, which still has kind of like a glam rock okay. thing to it. But um, yeah, there's always been guitars laying around my house, and so I've always, um, I just, Picked it up and just started playing, started writing, and I think if I was a doctor or a lawyer, my parents would be really disappointed in me. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is unusual, but then again, if, if that was the the environment that you grew up in. Yeah, yeah, they're they're all for you know the show and most, rock and roll. Most, most of the time, the parents are saying, don't, don't, "Do something, you know, uh, that's that makes sense yeah. before you want to depth." Delve into music. Yeah, yeah. My parents are completely opposite. They're like, <laughs> post more music videos and more songs. I'm like, okay, 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 okay. So um, yeah, they they love so, it. So you grew up probably with stuff like like David Bowie or Velvet Underground. Or yeah, that's exactly what they what they've taught me a uh, lot, and a lot of like British rock, a lot of like the Kinks and stuff like that. But yeah, definitely um, Velvet Underground, Blondie, and stuff like that. Very New York. Um, music is what I've grown up with, and that's all I know. So, <laughs> did your father hook up with uh, what was that the artist's name? Um, I can't remember his name right now. I'm trying to think of it. Uh, Andy Warhol. Yeah, my my dad. Um, actually, his art is similar to Andy Warhol's, and yeah, my dad. Really, what's interesting is my dad was really good friends with Salvador Dali. Look, well, really, okay. yeah. Um, and Dolly used to invite my dad um, up to his uh, hotel in New York City and um, actually gave my dad some of his clothes because my dad is very eccentric style and they would go you know to these fancy hotels and restaurants and you would have to wear a tie so Dolly would say come upstairs to my, my hotel room and I'll give you a tie uh -huh. so my dad has a bunch of Salvador Dolly ties and uh, you know, his home address and told my dad, you know, you have to come visit me and so yeah, they were really they were really good friends. But. Alice Cooper was friends with Dolly too. Yes, yes. And my dad is a huge Alice Alice fan. So. Alice Alice is absolutely uh, cool. yeah. I, I got to meet him back in twenty oh seven and that was uh, that was that was nice. Yeah, he's he's I love him and actually um and he's still on the road. He is still on the road, and I, I've gone to a bunch of his shows and um, his producer and mix engineer uh, Michael Wagner mm -hmm. Um, is uh, friends of mine in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and we've done some music with him, but I have a pet mouse. Uh, he's blind and only has two legs. I've had him, I found him in my kitchen three and a half years ago. And Let me so, guess, his name is Alice. No, 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 well, no Michael Wagner, okay. the, the producer, is watching my mouse and watches my mouse when I'm on the road, and he's currently cool. uh, watching my mouse right now. So, yeah, so he's good for that. <laughs> it's nice to know. Yeah, there's a lot of interconnections and <laughs> um, songwriting, recording. Um, when did you discover you do your own? 
Yeah, um, well, I mean, since I was about eight years old, when I picked up a guitar, I started writing music, and um, I got my first Tascam four-track recorder and started recording when I was like 12. And um, up until this day now, um, me and the guitar player, who's also the producer, um, we bought a house that has a recording studio attached to it in Nashville, Tennessee, where Dolly and George Jones all made their records in the 80s, and uh, we bought this place and make all of our records um, in-house, there, in the studio. Well, that's a huge savings if you look at producing it, stuff. It today. is huge. It is huge. And it's great to, you know, you can wake write. Up Yes. Three in the morning and do something. That's what we do. That's what we do. We just wake up or, you know, I'll have an idea at three in the morning or, you know, we'll go out and come back home and just, you know, everything's all mic'd up and ready to go already. So we just hit record and let's, come on, let's get this idea down. So it's it's definitely a benefit and we save save a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's definitely. Yeah. I think about uh, today, invest in, in uh, real estate and then combine the two of them. Yeah. You know. The problem is we just have too many ideas now, too many songs. That's the problem because when it's so accessible there's, and so easy to do, you're like, yeah, there's never too many. It's just yeah. an archive that you should dip into for ideas. It's at one point. Exactly. Time. You know. Yeah. You know, yeah. But, yeah. Then you can thank yourself when someday you get kind of like uh, writer's block. So yeah, that's what I do. I'm like, remember this song? <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm thinking of of uh, the music industry today. Um, is, is sex appeal, like, you know, sex sells, is that something important for you as, as far as your your music or your career or the show is concerned? I never even think of it like really? that. Yeah, I mean, I kind of just do what I do. I, I, I've always, I guess, had this sex appeal or been a sexy person. Mm -hmm. So people see that. I really think it has to do with my name, Monique. They think it's a... You really? Know, yeah, it, like, people are like, you have a stripper's name. I'm like, it's not my fault. <laughs> Blame that on my parents, I, you know, but, um, I, so I never go out of my way to be sexy, to mm. try and be sexy. I think whatever just happens natu naturally right. is what happens, but somehow it always comes off sexy. Mm -hmm. Um, hence the name her, you know, it's, it's, a, you know, that's sexy in itself, right? <laughs> I mean, I'd picture a name like Brittany, rather, as a stripper, but... Right, you, um, that's true. That's <laughs> good. I'm glad to know. <laughs> uh-huh. And you played something tonight in the set that uh, kind of surprised me. I don't know if you're aware of that. Probably not. Um, are you aware that Country Roads is kind of like, I refer to it as the unofficial German national anthem? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've, uh... Didn't know that, but I've learned that uh, mm -hmm. in the years of us touring, and um, we like to put up the, put these mashups together of, mm -hmm. of you know songs for an encore or a party, and um, we started putting in country roads because we liked the song, right. and we were in shocked and amazed that everybody in Germany knew the words and like would go nuts for it. So it's not like that in the states, obviously. So nope. so we almost like couldn't believe it that we kept on playing and said no maybe it was just that town and then we played in another town and then everybody started singing it so we we play it for the amazement of do they know it in this town and and we are always surprised as, as i said it's the unofficial german national i have no idea what I, that's yeah. crazy a lot of americans do not are not aware of that Right, and and I can't even answer it as a canadian uh, the reason behind that but they just all they all flip out that's Okay, so I guess we're doing something right. You're doing it right. We're doing something right. You introduced something right unknowingly. It's kind of like the free bird, yeah, right? Un <laughs> you unknowingly did something right. Right, right. <laughs> at least for the German market. Yeah, at least, gosh, at least so, there's one thing. So I was looking at some of your music online, okay. uh, videos, and I was, I was excited. You started out as kind of like a country hybrid, whatever, and now you're kind of like changing directions. How would you qualify or classify your music? So what we did is we actually started out rock and roll. Right. Her started as a rock and roll band. And uh, Caleb, who I write most of the songs with, we, we started the band in his uh, apartment in Brooklyn. And we were writing our second record, and he had some banjos and some lap steels hanging on his wall. And when we were writing the second record, I was like, do you play those instruments? And he said, yeah. So. For the second record, we started incorporating some of that in. We never called it country or anything like that. Um, we just put some of the elements, kind of like, I guess, a Zeppelin thing. You know, like that was more where our head was. But um, we took a crazy road trip with the whole band to Nashville, Tennessee. 
and said, let's just play one show there. And that one show kind of led us, you know, into this new genre. People were calling us Southern Rock, and next we're on tour with Kid Rock, and we're on like this crazy tour, and, and people were just calling us this Southern Rock country band. And we were like, wait, 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 wait. We have banjo in a couple songs. Like, so I was like, and I'm from New York City. Like, I know nothing about the country. Right. You know, um, so we've kind of had this, I would call it a phase of, you know, kind of a country influence Americana thing. And then the next record we wrote, we're like, we're going back to our rock and roll roots. And, you know, we still have some banjo and stuff on our record, but I don't know. So we're kind of, uh, kind of just do what we want <laughs> and maybe just big rebels in the, in the music business. But, um, no, I think, I think the business is the problem that they're not able to cope with change. Yeah. Well, that's true. You know, and it's funny because we just say people's iPads and iPods and the radio just plays all different kinds of music. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people like different kinds of music. So why can't a band just, you know, decide one, one day they want to do a, you know, put some banjo on it, but I'm not country, it's just, you know, it's, it is what it is. And Zeppelin did it. I mean, if you listen to yeah. Physical Graffiti, there was a whole slew of different music on there. Queen, yeah. Queen did it. Queen did the it. Opera. So that's exactly where my head is, and I, 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 that's that's kind of where we are. And right now, we're talking about, right after this tour, going back to the States and writing like a very acoustic, woody-type record. So, mm -hmm. you know, we'll do something like that. I mean, we could do what we want, right? It'd be like a live uh, album somewhere in, in the future? Yeah. Yeah, so we want it, we, we, yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> why not? Why not? Yeah, let's, let's just do it all, so, yeah. Okay, so who, who um, as far as the band is concerned, is this like a solid uh, lineup, or is there a change, or is it just people that you use for Europe, how does that work? No, we like to have um, a solid band, and, um, you know, the core, and Caleb and myself, we've been together with this band for about 11 years or so. A couple of members have switched out here and there. Um, on this new record is this band. Um, so, of course, you know, we wrote this record and um, these guys all played on the album and, you know, we wanted to tour with that. Sometimes some guys have come and gone that have, you know, been with us for about five years and then got married and did the baby thing and, and you know, are stuck at home with their babies and, mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not married. I have no kids. I'm married to rock and roll. So, uh, so I just keep on going, but yeah, this is um, this is our solid core right now. So we're we're good. Well, my <laughs> motto is life is a rock and roll dream. Yeah. Live it and then rest. Yeah, exactly. And resting, I don't even know what that word means, but that's, one day I will. That's that's <laughs> that's my motto. Yeah. So, I haven't slept in four years, but yeah. Four years. <laughs> Girl, you got time to catch up. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's see now. <clears throat> something I I don't I, I like to do is something called. Um, Either or. Oh gosh. Okay. I better answer this correctly. So I mean, it's it's I mean, it's it's, it's easier than uh, word association. Right. So you just have to pick between two. So okay. I either do word association or either or. So this time you you're, you're getting off easy. So let's see now. Cooking or grilling? Cooking. Oh, you're not a barbecue fan. Um, I'm not a big meat eater. No. So no. Yeah, but you can grill vegetables. Yeah, but that's. There's so many ways to have it. I'm an Italian. I got uh, You can't grill, uh, you know. You can't grill pasta. You can't grill linguine. <laughs> you definitely can't grill linguine. Because you can bake lasagna. That's right. Uh, <laughs> would you prefer a classical orchestra or a rock concert? Uh, I mean, I, yes, I would prefer a rock concert, but that's because I really love things loud <laughs> and rock and roll. Really? I do. All right, don't go the way of Pete Townsend, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, burn out or fade away? Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, probably Kurt Cobain did the coolest thing ever in his career. Is well, man. I don't know about cool. I mean, I mean for really career-wise. For career-wise, he, he did the right thing. For his career, for his life, he didn't. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. But for I his was, career... I wasn't quite sure what you were getting at. For his career, he did the right thing. For his life, he didn't. You know, I don't know Eddie Vedder, right? He's Who knows where he is. All right. Um, I would probably say burn out, of burn course, out. yeah. You don't want to fade away. No. Okay. no. Um, reel to reel or Pro Tools? Reel to reel. I love the reel to reel. Analog, organic. And, yeah, definitely. Um, we did a lot of the organic stuff with this new record. Um, we all wrote it together in one room without any preconceived ideas, no lyrics, no nothing. Let's just do it together. Um, so even 
recording. Uh, keep it analog. Don't, yeah. don't chew it to death. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> today or tomorrow? Uh, today. Yeah. Rather, you never know what tomorrow brings. No, I live for it today. I have no idea what tomorrow brings, so I live for it today. Nobody does. <laughs> Sunrise or sunset? Sunset. Yeah. Well, well, that's a tough one. Because sunrise wouldn't be me waking up to sunrise. But most musicians don't never ever see yeah. a sunset. They'll see a sunrise. Yeah, Actually, exactly. Actually, no, they don't see a sunrise. They see a sunset. Right. Maybe, so, yeah. so um, unfortunately, in my life, I see the sunset and I see the sunrise. Really? <laughs> well, you're lucky. Yeah. And that's why I said I haven't slept in four years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um... Yeah. Well, so I'll, I'll take both. No, uh, take both? but if I had to choose, yeah, the sunset would. would I don't want to see the sunrise. How about that? <laughs> I don't. Well, I, I want to uh, be asleep. <laughs> I certainly wish you that. But let's uh, have a, a look, a quick look at the album. Yeah, it's our new album, uh, Black and White. Well, and as you see, it doesn't say black and white anywhere on it the album. It doesn't say anything. It's kind of like uh, the Beatles or Metallica, you know, black or white album. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, I was kind of going for that. It says her. If you, uh, oh, if you, oh, if you, if you think of it creatively. If yes. you think of it creatively, um, but uh, yeah, we wanted to go for something that really didn't have all the all the stuff. Let's keep What's it. What's on the flip side? The flip side is uh, all right. Me. Information and information. So <laughs> what would be uh, hard to say, but you know, when you bring your baby to the world, which which baby's your favorite? Um, I have two favorites. Really? I have, um, of course, there's a song on here called Black and White. Which, right. That's what I named the album uh, from, and um, a uh, song on here. I'm looking for it. Um, where is? Oh, the first song. Sorry, I'm like, where is the song? Did your I hand, not put? Your head was coming. I'm like, did I not put my favorite song? <laughs> uh, there's a song on here called "Break Me." This is the first song on the album. Which, um, which is about? So I wrote it about being in love with a bottle of Jack Daniels. So it okay. is a complete love story with a bottle of Jack, and uh, it's written uh, from the point of view of the bottle. Write to Jack Daniels, maybe you'll get a couple of bottles. Exactly, right? They owe me. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, so uh, yeah, probably uh, the first track on this album is, is probably my favorite. Okay. Yeah. Did you play it tonight? Yeah, we played it tonight. We played it tonight, and we were... Uh, Randomly, we decided to shoot a music video for it, and we had our manager kind of run around. Oh, that's, the, that's okay. That was a track. Oh. Yep. All right. Yeah. Well, so. well, we'll be looking for that one online. Yeah, um, we'll definitely have that on there. All right. So. Monique. Hey. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this has been fun. And